Alexander the Great was a redhead. According to Elian, a Roman rhetoric teacher of the 2nd to 3rd century AD who wrote in Greek, Alexander the Great's hair color was reddish blonde. To maintain this color Alexander washed his hair daily with saffron, a very expensive spice. He was tutored by Aristotle. Born into royalty as the son of King Philip II and Queen Olympias of Macedonia on July 20, 356 BC, Alexander had one of the best education of the time when his father decided to tutor him under the guidance of one of the biggest names in contemporary philosophical teaching. Aristotle of Stagira. At that time Aristotle had not yet made a name for himself but he was a known pupil of Plato. So King Philip II invited him to impart his knowledge to his son, the decision much favored by Alexander's mother. She had a lot of faith in Plato's intelligence students. In 15 years of conquest Alexander never lost a battle. From his first victory at age 18, Alexander gained a reputation of leading his warriors to battle with impressive speed, allowing smaller force to reach and break the enemy lines before the enemy force were ready. After securing his kingdom in Greece, in 334 BC Alexander crossed into Asia, present days Turkey, where he won a series of battles with the Persians under Darius III. His military tactics and strategies are still studied in military academy today. Alexander's favorite military tactic was the phalanx. A rectangular mass military formation made up of closely ranked troops. The phalanx was a formidable fighting machine the spheres known as the Sarisa, used by soldiers in the phalanx war, sometime as long as 5 meters, and made of sharpened wood or metal-tipped wood. The tactic was perfected by Alexander's father Philip, who first learned of it at observing Greek armies. Alexander had a struggle to become king. Because Alexander's mother Olympias was from Epirus, he was only half Macedonian. His struggle to claim the throne was bloody, another of Philip's wives and her daughter were murdered, along with two Macedonian princes. He also put down several rebellious factions. He named a city after his horse. Alexander had tamed a wild horse named Bucephalus when he was a young. He was so endeared to the animal that when it died in 326 BC he named a city in which is now a modern-day Punjab province of Pakistan for his beloved horse. Alexander suffered from heterochromia iridum. Ancient writing of his time affirmed that Alexander had heterochromia iridum, a condition in which the colored part of the eye is multicolored. Alexander had one blue eye while the other was brown eye. When Alexander met with his future wife Roxanne, it was love at first sight. After his spectacular capture of Sogdian Rock in 327 BC, the 28-year-old Alexander was surveying his captives when Roxanne the teenage daughter of a Bactrian nobleman caught his eye. A few months later of Alexander's death Roxanne gave birth to the couple's only son. Alexander also suffered from ilorophobia. Alexander the Great, Genghis Khan, Julius Caesar, Adolf Hitler, Napoleon Bonaparte, Benito, Mussolini have the same thing in common, apart from being general. They are all reported to have suffered from ilorophobia the fear of cats. Alexander's death remains a mystery. On May 29, 323 BC while planning for his next conquest, Alexander went to a dinner party, thrown by one of his close confidants. After a long session of heavy drinking he started to feel unwell and went to bed, with a rising fever. Twelve days later on June 11, with no strength to leave his bed, one of the most conquerors in human history was proclaimed dead at a very early age. He was 32. Of course his premature death brought with it a number of conspiracy theories. His general Antipater and Antipater's son Cassander came under serious suspicion. Some even speculated that Aristotle might have had a hand in it too. However the modern medical specialists attribute his death to malarial infection.